Hey everybody, and Tony here with a review of Mozart's Die Entführung aus dem Serail, known in English as The Abduction of the Seraglio, which was shown at the Staatsoper Schiller Theater. The conductor was Christopher Mould. The production was by Michael Thalheimer. The set design was done by Olaf Altmann. The costumes were done by Katrin Leatag. The lights were handled by Olaf Freese. The chorus master was Frank Flade and the dramaturgy was handled by Katharina Winkler. Now, this opera is one of my most favorite Mozart operas of all time, as mentioned in my reviews of Don Giovanni and the Magic Flute. And I also have a CD of excerpts starring Sylvia Greenberg, Janine Thames, Gerald von der Schaaf, Wilfried Gamlisch, and George Little, and also a DVD starring Laura Aiken, who was the Constanza for this evening, Moisa Erdmann, Edgaras Monferas, Michael Smallwood, George Little, and Stefan Wattemolen as the Pasha Salem, which was done at the Pet Music Theater in the Netherlands, which I really enjoyed and had a lot of fun watching it since I also bought the DVD in Tom. And another reason why I really love this opera so much is that this requires a lot of virtuoso singing from the five main characters. You know, Osmin, Belmonte, Pedrillo, Constanza, and Blanca. And it also features the one speaking part, yet the most pivotal role of the opera, which is the Pasha Salem, who has a certain relationship with Constanza throughout the opera. Now, let's get on to the characters and their voice types. Now, Belmonte needs a full lyric tenor who has to navigate all of the coloratura and all of the arpeggios and a lot of the florid singing throughout this opera, and he needs to have a very graceful and very solid technique. Now, this is put to work in the likes of Constanze dich wieder zu sehen, and Ich baue ganz auf deine Stärke. Now, this aria represents like the, the, the difficulties that the tenor who sings Belmonte has to be faced with, like the frequent runs and the coloratura and even the runs the high notes, and he has to have a very solid technique. And that's pretty much it. This role, this main role, needs a very solid full lyric tenor voice who can navigate the coloratura, who can really sing his heart out in such an Italianate way, or even such a bel canto way. It's no surprise that a lot of Belmontes have ended up singing the likes of Edgardo, Hoffmann, Faust, Lohengrin, Loge, Walter from Stolzing, Eric from The Flying Dutchman, Apollo from Daphne, Matteo from Arabella, and many, many other tenor roles. Oh, and also that of Florestan from Fidelio. So basically, a lot of Belmontes have, who have sung this role have ended up singing a lot more bel canto roles or even the lighter Wagner roles or even some of the more spinkly roles of either the Italian, French, German, Russian, or English repertoire. In fact, my most favorite Belmontes have to be Anton der Mota, Fritz Wunderlich, Nikolai Geda, Paul Groves, and let's see, oh yeah, Roberto Sacchi. I really love these Belmontes because Personally speaking, oh, and also Peter Anders, because they all have such elegant voices and they really know how to bring the best out of Belmonte. So, aside from that, they also, any singer who sings Belmonte needs to have such great acting chops and not make him some desperate lover. He needs to, like, represent him as a multi dimensional figure and make him a very interesting protagonist. Otherwise, well, he would just be the stereotypical lovesick character. 
Now, his manservant, Pedrillo, requires a lightler tenor voice. To say that Pedrillo belongs to a bufo tenor role is a huge understatement. Now, while I do understand a lot of character tenors and bufo tenors have found a lot of pleasure singing Pedrillo, the way I see it, he needs a lightler tenor to bring out the best in his role, and especially when it comes to his two arias. Now, his lyricism is put to the test in In Morenland, in which he has to sound very graceful and very elegant. In Frisch zum Kampfe, this is pretty much a bravura aria for him, because he has to sustain some high A's, especially sing a high B in the in the other Christian Kampfe line. And it's really tough work, and it's also a very superb acting part as well, because he can have a lot of fun, like, working off of box of the Osmin of the evening, and it's just a lot of fun when any light lyric tenor sings this role. And a lot of my favorite Pedrillos have also sung the likes of Tamino, Rodolfo, Romeo, Renuccio, and many other roles in the light lyric tenor repertoire. And those include Merzad Montateri, Helmut Krebs, Linton Atkinson, and let's see, ah, Francesco Piccoli. Those tenors I really, really love, and also Michael Smallwood, because of their superb technique. And what's also quite interesting is that some of the former Pedrillos would end up singing the Monte nowadays as well. So that's also quite interesting to know about Pedrillo, since he has to have a little bit of a lighter color compared to his master, Belmonte. And speaking of which, let's go to Constanze, who is Belmonte's lover. Now, Constanze requires a dramatic, dramatic coloratura of soprano voice, who can be lyrical in a few moments, yet dramatic in the rest. She has to be very dramatic in her aria Martin a la Arten, especially if she has to sing this uncut. The way I see Constanze, she has to have the, the lyric coloratura singing of a Gilda or a Mina or an Elvira from I Puritani, the lyrical lines of a Zenka and Antonia, and the dramatic coloratura singing of a Queen of the Night, Donna Anna, Elettra, Vitalia, um, Lucia, Anna Bolena, and many other, oh, and also that Aethra uh, or Daphne, to really bring out the best in this character, which is no surprise because a lot of Constances that I've gotten to listen to have ended up singing a lot of the bel canto roles like, you know, Lucia, Amina, Elvira, Violetta, Amalia from I Must Not Dieri, um, Elvira from Ernani, Elena from Vives Tre Siciliani, and there was one. Oh, yes, and also Aitra from Egetisha Helena, and Daphne, and Lulu. In fact, my most favorite Constances have to be, well, aside from Laura Aiken, Elena Such, and Edita Gruberova, um, Mariela Devia, and also that of Yvonne Kenny. And I also love Annalisa Rottenberger, and Edda Moser, and Wilma Lipton III, too. Because like I said, Constanza is a coloratura assoluta role. She has to be lyrical in one moment, and then dramatic in a few other moments, and also has to have a very solid coloratura technique, which she has to put to the test in Martin von Alla Arten, which is a very difficult coloratura aria, but it's extremely rewarding as well, because they get to sing all of these really rapid passages, and it really gets you fired up, especially when you understand what Constanza is going through. Now, her chambermaid, Blonde, is usually sung by a light lyric coloratura, and to say that this role is a soubrette soprano part is also an understatement. Now, Blonde requires some florid, rapid-fire coloratura singing as well, especially when it comes to the high E 
of her first aria, Durchsichtigkeit und Schmeicheln. She has to sustain that high E for as long as she needs to, and to also have such great acting chops as well. And my favorite blondes have to be Reddy Grist and Kathleen um, Battle and Olga Pretiatko. I really have a lot of fun with these sopranos as blondes as well. Oh, and also, what's also quite interesting is that some of the blondes would even sing Constanza. For example, we had sopranos like Natalie de Fe, Laura Aiken, and Diana Damrau, who first started out as blonde, but then ended up singing the role of Constanza. And what's also quite interesting is that a lot of blondes have also sang the likes of Sabinetta, Sofia Camilli, Aminta from Die Schweigsame Frau, Gilda, Oscar, Nanetta, Lakme, Leila, Ophelia from Hamlet, and to some extent, Selina, Tamina, Queen of the Night, and Papagena, and also that of Enten. So it really requires a, a light lyric coloratura voice who has to navigate all the high notes very well and has to sound clean and brilliant and somewhat lighter than her counterpart Constanza. Osmin is a very rewarding part for a basso profondo because it gets to show his comedic timing very well and he also needs a very sensatorian, dark, black basso voice to match with this fun human personality. And my favorite Osmins of all time have to be Gottlob Brick, Kurt Böhmer, Josef Grindel, Kurt Riddle, and Kurt Moll, and also Marty Talbela and Matty Zalman. So basically, Osmin is basically the one of the best parts of this opera because yes, he is an antagonist, but he's a very fun antagonist that we can all have fun with, and he's a very human antagonist as well. Yes, he doesn't like it when things don't go his way, and we kind of sympathize with him. We kind of pity him sometimes, but he's a lot of fun regardless. And let's also get to the pivotal part of the Pasha Thelem, who is a very important aspect of this opera. Now even though it's only an acting part, he's a very pivotal part of this opera because he not only takes Constanza under his wing, but when he sees Federico, excuse me, the Monte, he suddenly realizes that, okay, his father is his father's enemy, so he has to either eliminate him or forgive him for all his undoings. And all ends well in this opera. He forgives him, and the Monte, Constanza, Petrillo, and Blonda, like, head off. So that's pretty much why I really love this opera so much. Oh, and also the fact that this opera also, like, makes us understand women's roles, especially compared to Europe, or especially in... Turkey, and the major differences between them, and it's sort of also a culture shock thing to also the likes of Petrillo and the many other characters in this opera, so it really makes us think about the many culture shocks that we go through in life. So overall, I really find this opera very interesting, and it's also no wonder why it's one of my favorites of all time. So let's get on to the, what I thought about the production. Now, for a Zeralio production, I thought this looked very much like a typical Zeralio production and more like some sort of art house film, given by how very minimalist it is and the fact that it basically used like a lot of grays, blacks, and whites in the whole lighting and the staging. In fact, the opera begins with the Pasha like looking out on a platform. And then we see Belmonte in the audience singing his first aria, and sometimes the characters would go around the audience and like even start their arias from there. And especially in the dialogue, now the dialogue in this opera makes great use of language, whether the characters not only speak in German, but also in English, in Italian, a little bit of Turkish, and that's pretty much it. 
This basically makes for a great use of language, especially when it came to Blonda, since she's also a uh, British maid, so it also makes sense to have her speak some English as well. And it was a lot of fun, it was very interesting, though at times the production looks pretty dreary. But it was pretty much interesting because it gets to show, makes us see the uncertainties and the insecurities each of the characters have throughout the entirety of the opera. And the costumes were actually pretty good. Constanza basically wears like a white gown with like pink, like paint on her arms. Blonda has a, has a black wig or she basically has black, long black hair and she has a pink dress. Pedrillo, it has like red makeup and he wears all black. Belmonte wears all white. Osmin has jogging pants and a collared shirt, and the Pasha wears like white and black makeup and is in all white, and the chorus are basically in all black with face paint, which I found pretty interesting. So, yeah, even though this production doesn't really sit well with me, I have to say that it was quite an interesting direction to go with this Seraglio, because usually with the typical productions of Mozart's abduction of the Seraglio, I expect a lot more like vibrance, color, vivacity, and a lot of that Turkish flavor, so to say. But still, it was quite interesting, and it kind of makes us look at the characters' um, insecurities and um, basically what bothers them inside and what makes them kind of tick. So it was a very interesting experience all throughout. And the conducting done by Christopher Moles was very well done, with especially great use of some of the Turkish like the Turkish um melodies, like especially in the end of Osmin's Abi Village Triumphieren, which I really enjoyed and especially that of the fast um, chorus lines as well, which was extremely enjoyable. Now let's get to the singing. The Belmonte for the evening was our very own Pavel Breslik, which I saw many times as Gennaro Roberto de Verre, and I also saw a few clips of him as Edgardo from Lucia de la Memoir. Hearing him as Belmonte, he was still able to deliver all of the goods with his very solid technique and very, very wonderful high notes. And especially his nuanced acting as a young nobleman who is uncertain whether Constanza is faithful to him or not. So he's, he was able to play and sing his role very well and very solidly and it was still a very enjoyable like time watching him perform as Belmonte because it's no surprise that Mr. Breslick has also sang a lot of Mozart operas in the past so his training in Mozart has definitely helped bring the character to life and which is also no surprise since he's probably also performed this role several times already. So he really knows what to do with this character and how to really make him come to life. The Padrillo was sung by Manuel Gunta. I've never heard of this tenor before, but it's very safe to say that I'm starting to love this light lyric tenor. I saw in his repertoire that he basically specializes in the character tenor and the light lyric tenor repertoire. And let me just tell you that I really love the color of his voice, especially when he sang Pristum Kampfer and In Moorland. It is a very gorgeous sounding light lyric tenor voice that I really enjoyed watching, and his stage presence as Pedrillo was also quite riveting as well. He didn't make him too clownish, he just made him a pretty serious character, and also a very straightforward character as well which I really enjoyed, 
because usually the the videos that I would usually watch would either end up being like um, being constantly bullied by Ozmin and like constantly shouting and constantly be like fun loving. But this Pedrillo, the way Manuel Gunter was able to portray him, he took him very seriously and he was able to use his voice very well. And he was also a pretty convincing actor. So let's get on to Constanza, sung by our very own Laura Aiken. Now, for those of you who don't know, Laura Aiken is a coloratura soprano who not only specializes in the lyric coloratura roles of Olympia, Rosina, Gilda, and even that of the standard coloratura roles of the Queen of the Night, Constanza, and Lucia from Lucia de la Marmor, and also that of Terminata, Fiacamilli, and even the light lyric roles of Marcelina from Fidelio, but she has also became She's also become an exponent for the dramatic coloratura roles of the modern operas like Lulu and even that of Marie from Die Soldaten. And she really has a very solid voice with Constanza. And it's no wonder why this role has become pretty much her signature role of all time. It's really helped by the fact that she was able to bring out all of Constanza's insecurity, her worries, and her pain and suffering that she was able to bring out so beautifully with such pathos. And her voice is still in tip-top shape after several years of singing. And it really shows. She definitely has a very solid technique and a very, very great way of attacking all of the coloratura. In fact, I also have her Constanza on DVD when she was in the Netherlands. So comparing her performance in this opera to that that I have on DVD, I have to say that it's still a very enjoyable performance. She was able to bring out all of Constanza's pains, sufferings, and even insecurities that she has as a person to the stage, and this is what I really enjoy all throughout. And then Blonde was sung by Sonia Grane, who I saw a year ago as Barbarina from The Marriage of Figaro. She was really good as Blonde. She was able to act Blonde really well, and she was able to have a very, very nice technique as well. Sure, she kind of struggled a bit on the high E, and sure, she may not have the brightness or the clarity of Nathalie Bessay, Madel Robin, Madi Mesplé, Elisabeth Bedal, Ghislaine Raphael, and many other lyric coloratura sopranos of the past, but I feel that she definitely has a lot of potential. She definitely has a bright future ahead of her, and I really, really hope for the best of her because this is definitely great material that she's working with, and I really hope to see a lot more of her in the near future. Who knows? Maybe she could be a Gilda or even an Oscar or even an Anetta, Anetta or Adina or Norina or even a Rosina in the soprano version of Barbiere di Siviglia. Who knows what the future will bring her, but I'm very excited to see a lot more of Miss Grane. Then we have the Osmin, sung by Willem Schwinghammer, a basso that I've heard several times, or I've heard about several times on the internet, and probably had a little bit of watching him on YouTube. And let me just tell you that his portrayal of Osmin was really good. He had a very well-focused and solid voice, and even though it didn't have that blackness that made the likes of Gottlob Frick, Kurt Böhmer, Josef Greindl, Karl Ritterbusch, Marty Talbela, Matti Selmanen, Kurt Riddle, Kurt Mohl, and many other bassos very well known, 
he was still able to pull off this role very well. Sure, I was sort of expecting a voice almost like of the Grand Inquisitor, or even Hagen, or Fafner, or Hunding, or King Marco, or Titorel, or Gournemont. I expected a more Wagnerian basso to sing this role, but still, Mr. Schwinghammer was able to still deliver all the goods in this role, and he didn't make him too clowny or too over the top, which I'm actually very happy. And he was able to really, really sing his part very well, even though I do prefer a darker voice. But still, he gave a very enjoyable performance, and one that didn't need to be so hammy. And then the, the Pasha was sung by Peter Motzen, who gave a very nuanced and very subtle performance as the Pasha, and still a pretty enjoyable performance as well. So overall, the performances in this opera were extremely enjoyable, with the standout being Laura Aiken as Constanza. It's no wonder why this role has become her signature role for so many years. It's helped by her clear diction, her very crystalline high notes, and of course, the attention that she has that she pays to in the text, in the subtext, and everything that makes Constanza like stand as a character. And the conducting was absolutely excellent. So overall, a very excellent evening for watching the abduction of the Seraglio, and the standout was none other than our own Madame.